All right. Logan has prayed for us. Grace has entered. And we are ready to begin. Um, we did this page last time. Well, I want you to do something right now. I want you to take these two equations, y equals 2x plus 5, y equals 2x plus 5, and uh, 5x minus 3y equals 15, 5x minus 3y equals 15. And I want you to graph them. Okay? I want you to graph them. Okay? Oh, it's page 286 in your... Okay, but you don't even need to look at the page, honestly. So I just want you to graph these two equations. Now, you can use... I like that jacket, bro. Steal that from you. Dude, uh, I want you guys to graph these two equations. Okay? So, we're going to pause for just a second. All right, everybody look up here, please. You good? All right. So, this first equation right here, y equals 2x plus 5... Uh, if you know the y equals mx plus b method of graphing, you were able to do this really fast. If not, you can plug and chug. Your graph should have looked like this. Did your graph look like this? Yeah, Say whoa if it looks like this. Ooh, Ooh, good. Go. Okay. So on the assignments, or on the explanatory section, when we met on Monday, we just asked, is 1, 7 a solution to this? And how did we handle that? Say it loud. We plugged it in. Yeah, we plugged it in. And so we're going to take, uh, you know, 7 where there's a y and 1 where there's an x. And we're going to say, uh, get a pen here, we're going to say y, uh, 7 equals, you know, 2 times 1 plus 5. Well, 7 equals 2 plus 5, indeed 7 equals 7. And we said, yes, that's true. And so we said it is a solution. So the answer here was yes, it's a solution. But what I want to ask you is, is 1, 7 a point on the line? Is it a point on this line? Well, yes. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, ding, ding, ding. Yes, it is a point on the line. Okay, now let's come over to this one. Let's come over to this one. Okay. I'm going to come back and discuss them all together. This one I showed you a little bit more work. Uh, I let x equal 0, I let x equal 3, I got two points here, I plotted them. Say, well, if your graph looked like that. Good. Okay. And so we asked in the original you know, discussion, is 0, 5 a solution to this? And how do we handle that? Plug how did we handle it? Plug we plugged it in. And so where there was um, you know, an x, we plugged in a 0. Where there was a y, we plugged in a 5. So we ended up with 5 times 0 is 0, minus 15 equals 15. And we said negative 15 equals 15. And no, that's not true. And so no, that was not a solution. But now I want to ask you, is it a point, a point on this line? Okay, well, let's go here. We got 0, right? And we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. Is that point on your line? No. No, no it's not. So we see something really interesting here. And I, I don't want you to write this down, okay? There's going to be a place in your notes for us to write this. I just want to show you something interesting. In the math world, we call it an equation. Uh, but what we're doing, remember, math is the manipulation of numbers to look different but remain the same. Yeah, and so in the graphing world, an equation equals a line. So look at this. It's fascinating. Look at this. 5x minus 3y equals 15 is an equation. And this right here is the same. It's its line. That's 5x minus 3y equals 15. 5x, 5x minus 3y equals 15. That is this line right here. Okay, let's come over here. Okay, y equals 2x plus 5 y equals 2x plus 5. That's this line right here. Okay, That equation is that line. But we're depicting it in the graphing world. Come back over here. So an equation is a line. So in the math world, we call it a solution to the equation. So we are asking you, you know, is this point a solution to that equation? And in the graphing world, that's a point on the line, okay? So this instance, it was not a point on the line. It was not a solution, right? Over here, it is a point on the line. 
and it made the math true. It's a solution. Okay. Catching all that? Raise your hand if you already knew this stuff. Raise your hand if you already knew this stuff. Uh, raise your hand if this kind of helps solidify for you. Meh. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Brother Rich. Yeah. I went to the study uh, center with the, with the questions I got wrong. What are the answers we using? And he kind of explained this in this way. I was like, oh, no way. And, like, it's all real numbers or something like that. He like, mapped it out on a graph. And I was like, what? And I said all that stuff. And I was like, no. Cool. Good. Yeah. Also makes sense from like quantum physics. I like they're able to in like general relativity relativity because they're like they're able to map everything and it makes almost sense now because everything in space and time is aligned. It's, it just makes sense how they were able to do that. Okay, Tony Stark. Yeah. <laughs> is that cool though? It is cool. Like right now we're working in right now we're <laughs> right now we're working with X and Y, but they had three because they're working in three right. D. Three dimensions. Yep. Yep. No, it's cool. Okay, we're going to move on today and go into chapter three. If you, uh, sometimes when we do stuff like this, you're like, where do I draw all this stuff? So when we have these extra note pages, probably should have told you to do that before we got started. It was extra notes you could have wrote in there. Let's go to 3.2. All right, let's go to 3.2. Um, are you ready, Grace? We need some action shots here, okay? Ready? On camera on. Coach Rich here, okay? Who likes football? Of course. Say, who you like football? Woo! Yeah, if you don't like American football, then you're a fetcher, okay? All right. So, you got the, you got the quarterback, right? Throws a pass, okay? Wide receiver. Misses the catch. Goes to catch it. <laughs> and just as the wide receiver goes to catch it, the cornerback, corner, okay, not the quarter, the cornerback, jumps in front and snags it, that's called a what? Interception. An interception, okay? So look at this diagram right here. You got your quarterback throwing a pass to wide receiver, the corner jumps the route, that's called an interception, right there, there. interception. Well, I hate to break your hearts, my football lovers, but an interception is not a football term, it's actually a mathematical term, okay? And an intercept equals a point where two lines cross each other, right? So an intersection is a place at which two lines intersect, but the actual point, okay, that point at which the corner snags that ball right at that very point, that is called the point of interception, and that is where two lines cross each other. Let's look at this real quick right here. Um, here's my y-axis, here's an x-axis. We've drawn a line right here. Okay, where our red line crosses the, uh, what? The y-intercept is where our line crosses the what? Y the y-axis. Go ahead and write that there, y-axis. Okay. By the way, that's uh, not spelled correctly. Oh, wait, is it? Yeah, it is. Never mind. Shut up. I'm uh, Y-intercept. That is spelled correctly. Okay. Um, so if... That's where our line crosses the y-axis. The x-intercept is where our line crosses the x-axis. Right that right there. Okay. Now I'm going to draw this on this board over here real quick. Let me use this same kind of stuff here. Okay. Would they have uh, uh, three and two? Yeah. So one, two, three, one, two. All right. So. <coughs> Whenever you draw the red pen on the black ink, it kind of starts getting a little murky, yes. Okay? So here's our, our red line, okay? I want to ask you a question. It's a powerful question. How many points are on that red line? How many points? Two. Infinite. 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 Now we're highlighting two, but there's infinite points, okay? So points equals infinite. All right? Now, one of the beautiful things, you guys listen to this, one of the beautiful things about our workbook is that you never have to guess what you're supposed to write down, you know? And honestly, most of the stuff you, that, we, that we write on the boards, you don't have to write down because it's already drawn for you. You're just filling stuff in, sometimes doing some work. But if you ever feel like there's something that you're like, oh, that, that makes a lot of sense, you want to highlight it, you know, you can have a highlighter pen, you know, it's like worth your scriptures or whatever. If I add some extra things, you know, like I want to write that down. But I'm going to tell you right now, all this stuff we're covering is in a, in a, on another page today. We're going to write all this down. Check it out. 
So the number of points on the line, okay, is infinite, okay? Is infinity everything? Is infinity everything? Well, okay, is that on your line? Is that on your line? That, 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 are those points on your line? No, so the answer is no, because there's infinite infinities. <laughs> your brain will start to smoke if you think about that too much. You'll start to smoke if you think about it too much. Okay? Something. Okay? Funny. Don't do that. It's against the WW, right? Okay, check it out. Okay, so um, how many x coordinates? How many x coordinates are there on a line? X coordinates. All right, listen, listen. Look up here, look up here. The number of points you said is infinite. Do you all agree with that? Yeah. And a point, a point is constituted of an x and a y coordinate. So how many x coordinates on a line? One. one. Infinite. 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 There's infinite. <laughs> Thank you. If there's infinite points, so how many y coordinates are there? How many y coordinates? Infinite. Two. Also infinite, right? You're, you're confusing this with the x and y intercept. Right? I'm just saying both horizontal and vertical, the, the line itself. Look at if there are infinite points, what's the x coordinate of that point? That point, that point, that point. There's infinite x coordinates. There's infinite y coordinates. Every point is constituted of an x and a y coordinate. There's a reason I'm asking all these questions. We're gonna get to it here shortly. So this is the y intercept, agreed? Yeah. And what I want you to understand is, is that the x value is what here? What's the x value here? Zero. And it's always zero. It's always zero. And the y coordinate we call b. Because look at me. Depending on the line, depending on the line, it can go through anywhere, anywhere, anywhere across the y axis. But x is always going to be zero because to land on the y axis, I cannot be to the left or the right. So it has to be, this always is zero. And we call that b. Okay, is B a Y coordinate? Is B a Y coordinate? Absolutely. But because every line has infinite points and infinite Y coordinates, we want to designate that one Y coordinate that represents where we cross the Y axis differently. We want to set it apart by calling it B, but it still is a Y coordinate. Are we clear? Yeah. And then our x-intercept, our x-intercept, where we cross the x-axis, what does y equal? What does y equal? Zero. Well, that always has to equal zero because it can't be up or down from it. And so what do you think we call this one? A. a. Okay. Is A still a value of x? Absolutely. But it is that lone value of x in the infinite coordinates of x on your line where we cross the x-axis. We return to your chart here, look up here, and we're gonna call this zero comma b, right? And this a comma zero, so we're filling that in, cool? What is a? What is a? X-intercept, what is b? Y-intercept, cool? You good? And a and b are still x and y coordinates but they are that specific x or y coordinate where we cross the x or y axis. Clear? As mud. Clear as mud? Clear. All right, clear. All right, let's go to the next page. So we're gonna learn another method by which we can graph lines. So I, I wanna show you something again in the organization of your visual chart. Let's just go back a page. Notice that this section here says, look up here, lines basics. I just highlight that. See that? Lines basics right there. Oh, whoops, I don't want to go. Okay. Lines basics. So that would go on your original chart in basics, just discussing what is the x and y intercept. But now we're going to use the x and y intercept to graph lines, and this is another graphing method. Um, this graphing method, how many points do you need to graph any line? Two. Say it loud. Two. 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 Okay, so you can fill that in. Two points right there, right? We need two points to graph a line. Yes? The other thing is, well, I was thinking of accuracy. So, like, the more points you have, the more accurate your lines can be, right? So, like, you can have two, but, like, 
Well, right? I mean, if you're hand drawing it, sure, I can kind of appreciate what you're saying, but I mean, really, it, the bottom line is, is if you've got a graph and you've got even graphing paper, something like that, and you've got these equal distant from each other, and you put a point here, and you got a point here, and you connect those with a straight edge, like a ruler, uh, you don't need any more points. Three or more is a waste of your time, right? One is a, one is a dot. 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 <laughs> one point, one point is a, dot. two is a, Line. three or more. Waste, waste, of my time. Time. waste of your time, man. I mean, you're just, you're just adding more to what you already have up there. But I, I get what you're saying. You know, you want to throw some more on there, you're like, for accuracy. All right, so looking up here, if you need two points, the first point we're going to find is the x-intercept. How do we find the x-intercept? We set the opposite value, opposite of x, y equal to zero, and then we'll solve for x. You remember the, the, the beauty of setting x equal to zero, how easy the math was? You're going to find the intercept method makes math really fast. Okay. To find the y-intercept, we set x equal to zero and we solve for y. We should have two points. We plot the two points and we connect them, we have our line. This is the intercept method of graphing. Why learn more than one method of graphing? Why learn more than one method of graphing? Okay. So, get a different perspective on how we could solve something. Different equations? Definitely uh, different equations and different uh, uh, methods are going to yield different results. Not really. They're going to yield the exact same result or you're going to mess up because math is the manipulation of numbers doing different but remain the same. So we've got to get the same line. Um, I don't know. So is this just a waste of our time learning multiple methods? Yes. Yes? never been much of a time waster, so doubt I would teach you three methods if it was a waste of our time. Yeah? I think just learning more than one way to do something is smart, because just being having that mindset of like, oh, there's more than one way to do something. Okay. Yeah? I would say that learning multiple is important, because if you're doing it this way, and the x and y intercept are both cross through zero, then you're not going to know where the rest of the line is. Whereas if you solve for different values of x, then you'll have a wider spread, even if it does go through the screen. Do you know what Fetchin, when Fetchin and Smart made a baby, do you know what it was called? A fart. And you are a fart, dude. You are a Fetchin <laughs> Smart, brother. That's awesome. I'm impressed. Okay, We're going to run into that here shortly. And so one of the things you're saying is, is that some methods are limited. Some methods are limited in what they can do for you. So not, all, not, not each method isn't going to serve you well in every circumstance. So one thing I would write here is methods are limited. Okay? And so sometimes we need a different method to achieve what we're trying to achieve. Yeah? I'd say it like a, especially if you like a basketball shot. Sometimes you're gonna have to pick and roll, sometimes you're just gonna have to shoot it from the three. Yeah, yeah, sometimes some shots are going to be defended too well. you got to have something else in your repertoire. Very good. I like it. So uh, some methods are limited, but one thing I will tell you is each method we learn teaches us a powerful skill. And I write that down. Each method teaches us a useful skill. So this method teaches us how to find intercepts. And intercepts are powerful. Do you know why? Well, let's look at this. Look at this graph right here, okay? All the values of x down here are positive or negative? negative. Right, negative. All the values of x up here are what? Positive. positive. So really, this is the break line between profit and loss if this is a company's you know, revenue equation, okay? So a lot of times your intercepts are some of the most powerful dots on the line in terms of knowledge because it's at that intercept that we're crossing from positive to negative realm. Whether we're looking at um, an analysis of money or an analysis of temperature or an analysis of change, okay, the intercept is the threshold at which we are above or below you know, the line in terms of positivity or negativity. And so understanding intercepts becomes pretty critical. And this method teaches us how to find intercepts. Okay, what I want you to do right now is 
I'm going to, and you can uh, put it on the board here, I, I'm going to leave the uh, uh, overhead on this method for you in a moment, but I want you to turn the page and I want you to graph these three lines. Okay, so we're going to pause um, our, our video in a moment here at home and give you a few minutes to uh, graph these and give you some minutes here in class and then uh, we will return, but I'm, I, I'm going to leave this on the board. For those of you at home, uh, you're going to need to go back and forth and look at this. So you guys can look at the steps and graph those three. Go ahead and pause. Negative six. We graphed that exact same equation in the last section with plug and chug, but now we're going to do it with the intercept method. Okay. So if I want to know my x-intercept, I want you to think about this, I always set the op what's the opposite of x? Y. Y. We set y equal to zero. So we're going to set y equal to zero. That's my first step, to find the x-intercept. Therefore, I will take 2x plus 3 times 0 equals negative 6, right? I plug it into this equation. Zeros make math super fast. I got 2x equals negative 6. I divide by 2, divide by 2. I get x equals negative 3. Okay, what's my first point then? Negative 3. Negative 3, comma, 0. Always remember to put these in the right place. Don't say 0, negative 3. How many points do I have right now? How many points do I need to graph any line? Two. So i got to find the other intercept. So what's the opposite of y? X, so I'm looking for the y-intercept. I would set the opposite, set equal to zero. So I'm gonna set x equal to zero, okay? And I'm gonna take two times zero plus three y equals negative six. I get three y equals negative six. Divide by three, divide by three. I get y equals negative two. And I got zero comma negative two, okay? So, One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I got negative three and zero. And I got zero and negative two. And that first line should have looked like that. Say woo if your line looked like that. Woo. Good. You got it right. Let's go ahead and do this one. X minus three equals Y. I want to find the X intercept. So what do I set equal to zero? Y. So the opposite, Y equal to zero. So I get X minus three equals zero. Agreed? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to add 3 and add 3, and I get x equals 3. My first point is 3, 0. Over here, if I want to find the y-intercept, what do I set equal to 0? x. Set x equal to 0, so I get 0 minus 3 equals y, therefore negative 3 equals y. That's pretty quick and slick. 0, negative 3. And I'm going to graph those on this other, yeah, line will go blue on this one. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 0. Uh, 0, negative 3, and that line should have looked like that. Say, well, if you got that one right. Woo, very good. Okay, pretty easy stuff. Now, you had separate graphs to put them on. I just put them both on the same graph. You guys cool? Okay, let's come over to this board. Then you had x equals negative 2y, yeah? And this created a little bit of an issue, yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes it did. Now, Jesse, you brought this up with us, and you said if... If um, our point ends up being, if our intercept ends up being the origin, 0, 0, then we're going to run into a dilemma. So let's go ahead and we want to find the x-intercept. What do we set equal to 0? Y. Set y equal to 0. So come in here, i got x equals negative 2 times 0, which makes x equal 0. Okay, so I have 0, 0. At that point, can I share something with you? At that point, you know you're done. You know your x and your y-intercept. But for those of us who sometimes don't quite understand or trust ourselves, maybe is even a better thing, we said, okay, well, let's go ahead and, you know, let's set x equal to zero and solve for this. But here's the deal. Can I share something with you? This is called an ordered pair. They're like an eternal companionship, okay? Every ordered pair on every line is an eternal companionship, okay? They're inextricably connected one to another. So when x equals zero, what does y equal? When y equals zero, what does x equal? Okay, we return over here, okay? On this line over here, when x equals zero, what does y equal? When y equals negative three, what does x equal? And that is always true for x minus three equals y. We come back over here, my point is, is that if you're wondering uh, what y equals when x equals zero, well, we already know. When x equals zero, y equals zero. Catching me? Because when we set y equal to 0, x equals 0. But if you don't trust yourself or trust me, you can say, well, 0 equals negative 2y. My goal is to get y alone. I divide by negative 2. I divide by negative 2. 
Zero divided by any number is zero equals y. So I got zero, zero again. So how many points do I have? One. I got one, because they're the same point. Okay? And there's my point right there. So I have a dot. Yeah, one is a dot. And I need a line. So what do I have to do? What do I have to do? Yeah, what method? Plug and chug. Yeah, you got to revert back to plug and chug. So you have to say, all right, well, x equals negative 2y. Let x equal something. Pick something. 40. Four, what? Four. Even that 40. You just want me to draw 40 hash marks up here. Let's do 3. Let's do 3. OK, yeah. let x equal 3. 3 equals negative 2y. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. I get y equals negative 3 halves. So I have 3 comma negative 3 halves. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. And I have 1, 2, 3 and negative 1 and a half, which is about right there. And so your line should look like, well, like that. Okay? Say woo if you got that line. Okay? Say uh if you didn't. Uh. All right? Okay, what did you do? Did you only find the origin and then quit? Yeah? Who quit after just finding the origin? Raise your hand. Okay, yeah, we are. are. And you say, well, you told us we could only use the intercept method. Well, until it fails you, right? And that's the whole point. We go back to the previous page where I said, why do we learn various methods? Well, we need to know how to find intercepts. That's the value of the intercept method. It teaches us how to find intercepts. But the inter and intercepts are fast. This is faster math than plug and chug. Whenever we're dealing with zeros, it's fast math. But whenever our intercepts are the same, the only time the intercept is the same is if it is the origin. If it's the origin, then we got to find another dot. We cool? You're going to run into this in your homework. You guys good? All right. So on this page here where it said, maybe, come on. Why is this not? Eh, eh. <laughs> there we go. At the bottom of the page, it says, what do I do here on this last problem? The question, the answer to that question is, use plug and pray, <laughs> use plug and chug. <laughs> use plug and chug to find the second point. That's the answer to that. Let's jump to this page right here. We've already taught you all of this. We're going to review it quickly, OK? We've already gone through all of this. It's kind of fun. This is why I told you not to write this down, because it's already on the board here. It's, it's, it's written for you for the most part. In the math world, it's called an equation. In the graphing world, an equation is a line, right? Line. An equation equals a line in the graphing world. A solution to an equation equals what? Point on the line. Point on the line. Very good. I'm glad you didn't just say a point. It's a point on the line. Very good. A solution to an equation is a point on the line. Let's graph the equation x plus y equals 3. Let's graph it. The equation x plus y equals 3. Okay, erase this. x plus y equals 3. What method do you guys want to use? Let's go, let's go intercept. Yeah? Let's go intercept. Uh, if I want to find the x-intercept, what do I set equal to 0? Y. y equals 0. So I'm going to have x plus 0 equals 3, which makes x equals 3. That was easy. 3 comma 0. Okay? If I want to find the y-intercept, where I set equal to 0? X. x equals 0. Okay, so this is set y equals 0, set x equals 0. Okay, we solve for the opposite variable, so we go 0 plus y equals 3, y equals 3. That was easy. Okay, and 0, 3. So we're going to graph this. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and we got 1, 2, 3, 0, and we got 0, 1, 2, 3, and there is the graph of my line. Yeah? yeah. You guys see that? Okay. So you should have that up there on your graph. Okay, how many points are on this line? Yeah. Infinite. Okay, answer, answer that question. Number two, how many points on any line? Infinite. infinite. Every line has infinite points because it goes forever and ever and ever in each direction. How many x coordinates? How many x coordinates on every line? Infinite. How many y coordinates? Infinite. Okay, so these first four answers infinite, 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 infinite. Okay? Is 3, 0 a solution to this equation? Is 3, 0 a solution to this equation? Okay, so look up here. 
If I plug in three plus zero, it equals three, agreed? So yes, it is a solution, but we also can go one, two, three, and we can check it is a point on the line, okay? So the answer is yes. And is it a point on the line? It asked you that. Yes, it is, okay? Is negative three, negative three a solution? Look up here, negative three plus negative three, does that equal three? No, negative six does not equal uh, three. So the answer is no, but then if we plot that point, negative three, negative three right here, is that point on the line? No. no. And so we prove that, you know, a solution is a point on the line. If it's not a solution, it's not a point on the line. Let's go ahead and move forward. Make sense? Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. All right, the last thing we got to talk about is vertical and horizontal lines. Give you guys a second to catch your breath. Okay. So, come over here. Well, you guys feel neglected? I'll come over here. For you. What if I ask you to graph x equals negative 2? Okay? Graph x equals negative 2. So that's right here. Graph x equals negative 2. Graph x equals negative 2. Well, I get a lot of students at this point where, you know, they'll draw a graph. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And they will do that. And that's all they'll do for me. They'll put a dot there, okay? Well, let me share something with you. That's not a dot. That right there, negative two, zero, that's a dot. That is a dot, which equals a point, which equals an ordered pair, right? We got this parentheses with an X and a Y coordinate. That right there, that equal sign, that designates this as an equation. And we just got done telling you that in the math world, it's called an equation, but in the graphing world, it equates to what? A line. A line. Not a dot, it's a line. Look at this. An equation line has an equal sign, x equals negative two, versus an ordered pair, a point, it is negative two, zero. Okay, cool? All makes sense, so everything I wrote on there is already in your notes for you. So, you're gonna learn something here. And I want you to come back and look at this board, first of all, look at this board. How many, look at this, how many variables, how many variables in that equation right there? Two. How many variables? Two. How many? Two. 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 X and a Y, agreed? Okay, look at this. How many variables in that equation right there? Two. Two. Yeah, and X and a Y. Now, come over to this board. How many equations, or sorry, how many variables in that equation right there? One. Solamente uno right only one and whenever there's only one variable in an equation you have either a horizontal or a vertical line look up the top a single variable equation means you have either a horizontal or vertical line every time so we're gonna fill in this chart right now we're gonna graph these so first of all we're gonna graph X equals negative two. they asked us to graph it here we're gonna actually gonna put it on this little graph right here in this chart so here's what I want you to understand okay I'm not graphing a dot, I'm graphing an equation. So how do I graph this? Oh, and then you go vertical line. Well, I need two points to graph any line. Or I can memorize that it's a vertical line, but, but just in case I'm not good at memorizing and I forget which one's vertical, which one's horizontal, I gotta find a second point. So tell me something. Find me another point where x equals negative two. Give me another coordinate where x equals negative two. Negative two, four. Okay, negative two, one, two, three, four, right there. Okay, connect them, and you are done. Watch this, this is kind of cool, watch this. Everybody look up here, please. I'm gonna just highlight a couple of things. 
tell me, okay, and, and these will all be whole numbers. Don't we're not going fractions. What is this point? What are the coordinates to this point right here? This point right here. Negative two, negative one. Negative two, negative one. How about this point right here? Negative two, zero. Negative two, zero. This point right here? Negative two, two. And this point right here? Negative two, four. What did x equal on all those points? A horizontal or vertical line reveals that every single point is the value of this. So if x equals negative 2, every x equals negative 2. Okay? Cool? cool? So let's go ahead and let's graph y equals negative 3. All right? So if I tell you to graph y equals negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right? So, we find y equals negative 3. Give me another point where y equals negative 3. Two. Uh, so, 1, 2, right there. We connect them. We have a horizontal line. Okay? And if we take every single point on this line, okay, let's go ahead and tell me, what are the coordinates of this point right here? Right here. 2, negative 3. 2, negative 3. This point right here. 0, negative 3. 0, negative 3. This point right here. Negative two, negative, three. negative 2, negative 3, and this one here was negative 3, negative 3. Y equals negative 3 on every one of those values, right? Because Y equals negative 3. So those two graphs should be drawn right here and here. Okay, so to graph them, but we're, we're going to draw the graphs up here, okay? So let's talk about this for a minute. The vertical axis, the vertical axis is called the what axis? The vertical axis. It's called the y axis. Interestingly enough, a vertical line's equation is an x equal statement. It's the opposite of the axis. You might want to write this down, okay, if, if it helps you. This is something I didn't write on here, and I'm not going to write on here. You can. Is that, you know, a vertical line is the opposite of its axis. Okay, so an x equals statement would make you think you have a horizontal line, but actually it's a vertical line. Does that make sense? And a horizontal line, right? A horizontal axis is the x-axis, but you have a y equals statement. Okay? But worst case scenario, you can always come back here, and whatever you have, just find yourself another point with negative 2 on it, right? And you can connect the dots, and you'll know whether you have a horizontal or a vertical line. I want you to take a minute right now. We're going to come to this far board over here, and I want you to graph... Negative 3x plus 12 equals 0. Negative 3x plus 12 equals 0. Negative 3x plus 12 equals 0. First thing I want you to recognize, though, when I do this, how many variables are in this equation? So as soon as you're taking a test, as soon as you see that this equation has one variable, you should be saying to yourself, ah, this is either a horizontal or a vertical line. Now look up here. The next thing you should be telling yourself is that one variable is what? It's x. And the x axis is the horizontal axis, so this will be the opposite. This will be what kind of a line? This will be a vertical line. Okay? All right. So what do you got to do with this problem? Tell me what to do. Get x by itself. You got to get x by itself. Thank you. That's perfect. So we're going to subtract 12 from each side. We get negative 3. x equals negative 12. We divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. We get x equals 4. So we have uh, a, an equation here of 4. So now we're going to draw this like this. And we go 1, 2, 3, 4. x equals 4. And this is a horizontal or a vertical line. It's a vertical line. But if you can't remember that, Give me another point where x equals 4, right? We just go right there, and we connect the dots, and we're good to go. We're done. Cool? All right, last thing on this. Our next section that we cover is all about slope. And this is a, this is a chart you need to be able to recreate from memory. Slope of a horizontal line. Okay, look up here. Would you agree this table is horizontal or vertical? Which one? Which one? Horizontal, okay? The pen moving. What's the slope? Zero. Now, I had a student in one class tell me the slope is none. Okay? I've never seen none um, in a number set in math. I've never seen any set of numbers where none is a value. 
right? So none is not a value in math, okay? It's zero. So you have a slope of zero, okay? Now, how many of you have ever gone cliff jumping? Like you jumped into a river or a lake or something off of a bridge, bridge jumping, something like that. Raise your hand, come on, tell me. Almost all of you. And how many people have ever skied or snowboarded in here? How many people who have, wow, it's a lot of skiers and snowboarders, that's awesome. How many of you have ever skied or snowboarded off of a small drop off or cliff or something? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. You know that moment at which you, you know, leave the horizontal surface and you're in air where you have nothing underneath your feet? Your heart kind of goes up into your Adam's apple. You know what I'm talking about? You're kind of like, you know, it's like, it's like a little bit of a moment. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it kind of takes your breath away a little bit. Your heart goes up in your Adam's apple, okay? It's kind of an undefined moment, you know? You kind of can't really define that. It's like, you know, you kind of have to gasp for air, right? I want you to remember that. That a vertical, a vertical line, its slope is called undefined. And I'm going to show you why mathematically on Friday but right now we're just going to memorize that the slope of a horizontal line, right? Pen's not moving. It's it's moving. It's moving. It's zero. <laughs> it's zero. Okay. But up off of a cliff, right? And so this would be coming off the cliff. Look. Okay. It falls. Right. It goes off. There's a bridge jump right there. A cliff jump. But what's interesting is we're not touching anything. There's no surface. Like if we had a really, really, really steep surface. This could roll down that surface, right? Okay, but when we go off of it, it just falls, right? It's an undefined moment. We'll talk about why that is on Friday. For now, we're just going to memorize it. Okay, your homework tonight. Uh, can you use the plug and chug method to begin with? Never. You are to use the intercept method to graph your lines. However, however, so you. you if, if you run into a, a, a situation where the x and y intercept are both zero, the origin, you'll have to use plug and chug to find your second point and graph the line. You're not to give up. Um, I want you to just look at this page with me. You don't, if you don't go there, it's fine. On Friday, the entire section is about slope. And so you'll see it says lines, slope. So when we make our visual chart, this section will cover everything about slope. There's no other sections that talk to us about slope other than this. Look at all the names of slope. Every one of those means slope. M, rise over run, delta y over delta x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, pitch, grade, rate of change, all those mean slope. We're going to go on a little field trip on Friday, okay? So bring your coats because we're going to walk outside for just a little bit. We're not going to stay out there too long. No need to be scared. It's cold, but we're going to come back in and be warm, okay? We're gonna go outside for a little bit. I want you to look out that window at the Spory building, the one straight across from you. Does that building have slope? I wanna bring the camera over here. Does yeah. that building have slope? The roof, the roof. Yes. Yes, yes it does, okay? It definitely has slope, okay? Uh, look to the right or to the left. We have the Romney building to the left. We have the, what, Clark building to the right. Do those have slope on their roofs? Yes. Well, they look flat, but they actually do have some slope. We're going to discuss where that slope is and how we find it and all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about slope because slope is something that really applies to the real world. It's all around us, every day, slope. We are dealing with slope constantly, okay? It's kind of a cool section. You guys have a good one. Um, get your homework done. By the way, before you go, go, go. Chapter 2 test, okay? Many good grades. Definitely some that need to retake the test. If you, and, and please understand, there's a large population of people that did well, but there's a decent population of people who want to or need to retake it. Do not be dismayed. I warned you, it's a harder test than R and 1, okay? But you can retake it. Listen, don't be a turkey and go run and retake that test without doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to prepare. And you prepare by getting together with a tutor and going over all the problems you got wrong on the test. You have nonstop access to your test that you took. You can look at all the problems you got wrong and review those. But take this time when this material is a little more basic to get this test retake done. Test retakes for chapter two end when? Saturday, Saturday by 11.59 p.m., okay? 
All right, you guys have a good one. I'll see you on Friday.